Hello everybody, it's Tuesday and it's time to do another drawing lesson. Uh, today you saw we're gonna be drawing Pua and he's from Moana, which is one of my favorite movies that I got to work on. So I'm excited to draw this guy. Uh, first things first, my name is Michael Woodside. I'm an animator. And uh, during this time of social distancing, I thought it would be fun to do some drawing together. Uh, YouTube made that possible with our um, streams that we've been doing. So uh, join me and we're gonna learn how to draw Pua together. So it's gonna be about an hour long probably. Um, and a lot of people have been using this in their curriculum, which is cool. It's been fun to see how people have um, adapted this into their daily life as we figure out what daily life means with these new rules. So um, anyway, <clears throat> for the people who are just joining, uh, you might be wondering who this is for. Do I need to know how to draw in order to do this? No, we're gonna do very simple shapes. I'm gonna go slow so that everyone can pay attention and uh, follow along. So. Grab some paper and some pencils. Uh, I have some supplies that I'll be using today. I use two different things. I have a uh, red pencil that I'm gonna do my underdrawing with, and then a black pencil that I'll do the um, color, or the outlines with, like the final line. So you can do that all if you want with uh, one pencil, or crayons, or markers, pens, whatever you want it to do. Um, we're gonna be learning how to draw Pua together today. So if Maybe halfway through the drawing, like, it doesn't look right at all, you want to throw it away, don't do that, we're going to finish it. Once you finish it, you'll be uh, happy that you did, because it usually ends up looking better than you expected. Um, I thought it'd be fun today. We have these um, little bracelets that we get when we're doing our wrap party, and the wrap party is when we finish a film. So we can sort of uh, celebrate the finish of Moana which was on um, November 5th, 2016. That's when we celebrated. So I'll be wearing this while we draw today just to remind me of what it was like to work around other people. Um, so uh, the first thing that we do before we start drawing is we clean our hands because our art supplies are dirty. It makes our hands dirty. So I'm just gonna use some hand sanitizer and clean up here. Um, and yeah, so this week we have some fun drawings planned. Um, we are pre-recorded. Normally, in the past, we've been live, but pre-recording gives us a better video quality. So uh, it's important for me that you guys are able to see the drawings that we do um, and be able to post it on uh, the internet. So I use a hashtag draw with Woodsy, and that is where you can post up the drawings that you did. Uh, thank you for sending your drawings in already. I love seeing them. It's my favorite part. Uh, usually right after class, everyone uh, posts their drawings and then even later, as people catch up, they, they post drawings from weeks ago. So we are in week three of this. Let's get started. I'm going to move this over to the desk. Cool. Set this up. All right. So uh, while we draw, I always listen to music, and the music is uh, film scores from animated Disney films. And uh, I love that because it usually gives us a nice balance of um, Disney inspiration, but we're not getting too caught up in lyrics. Um, Cause when I draw, I like to keep it, keep my mind clear. So we'll start with some, uh, some Moana. Okay, so the first things first, when we start drawing, we like to warm up our hands and arms and all of our drawing tools. So I'm gonna take my under drawing pencil See how I can draw with the bracelet? And then start doing these circles on the sides of the page. And that'll help me um, get a good, let's get my arm warmed up so that I can do the drawing that I need to do. Pua today, we're just gonna be drawing his head. So we're gonna leave a lot of space on the side for his ears, but we can draw our main head circle pretty big. I'm doing this really loosely and I'm using my whole arm. I'm moving my whole arm as I do the circles, exaggerated version of it, um, so that you can get a more consistent line. A lot of this is muscle memory too, so that's why we're warming up is to teach our muscles, our arm muscles, what we are expecting from it during this drawing. So one of my favorite things too about these circles is that it makes the paper already pretty messy from the beginning. Um, so there's no, I feel no pressure to make this a really clean, precious drawing. Um, uh, it's just, it's just going to be learning. So I've already kind of made the, made the drawing messy, so I don't, 
feels like it gives me an in. Sometimes the blank page is a really scary thing to start with. So I've already ruined the blank page by adding these circles, but I think it works well. And so for example, when I start outlining some of these bubbles that I've drawn basically, um, you can see that once I do that, it sort of makes all the red lines go into the background. And so the focus gets on these new lines. So that's why we draw really lightly with our red pencil and then we can go back over it with the darker. So Pua, I feel like I'm pretty warmed up. I'm gonna sharpen this a bit because I filled it. Pua is based on a lot of round shapes, but some of them are variations on round, but we've done them before. So we're gonna talk about that. So I'm just gonna start again with my circle. I'm gonna put it right about here. I'm just leaving room on the sides for his big ears. He's got big, big pig ears. So I wanna make sure that I have room for that. And then in this drawing, he's going to be facing right at us. So I'm going to do some long lines here, right down the middle, and then towards the bottom here. Yeah, maybe, maybe around here. Kind of just below middle. I'll show you, this is based off of this idea where um, a three-dimensional object is this head, and I've used a ping pong ball to show. And we have the vertical line here and the horizontal line, and that tells us which direction the character is looking. So since he's looking right at us, we have it straight on. Um, but his head is a little bit bigger than this, so we're going to adapt that shape. So when we drew Judy Hops or when we drew Stitch, we We'll talked a lot about the gumdrop shape and the gumdrop if you remember is rounded on top and then it comes down and then it has a longer line on bottom than it does on the top see how the top is only that wide but this one bottom one is longer and so that gives it this like gummy feeling to it who has a similar kind of shape so i like to build off of this circle and just sort of start pulling the shapes down here on the other side. And I'm going to connect the bottom, but below the circle. So the drawing's upside down, but draw it all the way down here. And this is just a rough indication of what the shape is going to be, so it's, it's okay if it's a little off, we can make changes to it along the way. So this is the basis for Pua's head. The next things I want to actually put on here are his eyeballs. So we're going to use this middle line that we drew. And that'll be the, the line that the eyeballs are sitting on top of. So his eyeballs are just like these little circles. They're just little circles that are off to the side. So they're actually a little closer to the outside than they are to the middle. So I'm just going to really lightly do that here. And then thinking about the distance between these two, I'm going to try to mimic that distance going over this direction so that they feel like they're the same distance apart from each other. Again, we're doing it lightly so that we can always make adjustments to it. While we're looking at the head shape, I kind of want to flatten out the top of the head a bit a little round and I, I like this gummy flat here so I'm, I think I'm just going to cut into the circle a little bit and then call that our line. So I've heard from a lot of perfectionists who don't um, want to change like cut into the shape or change it after they've done it um, but that is something that we do all the time we're always finding the drawing as we go we talked about it yesterday with, uh, with Goofy that the drawing is found and it's not necessarily, you don't really know where it is at the beginning. So 
as I draw, I kind of make discoveries. I'm like, oh, this should be different, and then I change it. Um, so don't feel bad if you have to change it. I try not to erase because I feel like if I were erasing, I would be erasing all day and I would never finish anything. Um, but with this method of doing a light underdrawing and then you get the darker line here, kind of don't need to erase. So that's why we do that. Okay, so he's got eyebrows. His eyebrow shapes are a little weird. So I'm gonna draw an example eyebrow over here. So if you think of it, this is the eyeball here. And then the eyebrow is above that. He's a happy guy. So we're just gonna draw a line like that and then over. And we just copy that over here. It's hard to describe what this shape is, but this is a, an important line here. If you're able to do that, is making sure that there's a change in direction there. We call that the peak of the eyebrow. And that helps us know that the head is round and it's sort of wrapping around the head this way. So we're gonna do that over here, off to the side of the head. There's that line there. So I did, I was an animator on um, Moana. So much fun to work on that film. I mentioned it before in a previous drawing, but the directors for that movie were Ron Clements and John Musker, who directed some of my favorite films from my childhood, uh, Little Mermaid and Aladdin and uh, Hercules. I love Hercules. And then uh, right before Moana, they did Princess and the Frog. So they've done a lot of really great films. Also, if you've watched um, Great Mouse Detective too, they worked on that. A lot of good movies. So being able to work with them on this film was amazing. I never actually got to animate Pua. This character of Pua was supervised by Adam Green, a friend of mine at work, and he also supervised Hey Hey. So he worked on both of these fun characters. Yeah, fan favorites. Adam's a really funny guy. Okay, so this eye has a little dark patch over it, so we're going to sort of indicate where that might be. I'm not going to color it in yet, but I'm just going to drop this from the eyebrow straight down towards the eye. I'm going to wrap around that circle there. Any chance to catch up to that? And from here, it's going to come off the bottom of the eye here and then connect back up to the top. So that's just a rough indication of where we want that eye patch to be. And then this side doesn't have an eye patch, so we leave that alone. So I'm going to really lightly just draw a line that connects the two eyes here just to know where on this center line, how high up that eyeball is. Because that's where the top of, of his nose goes. So Pua's got this great big blocky nose. And the top of the nose is like a... If we take a U and we turn it upside down, so now we have... Nope. <laughs> yeah, this shape. Drawing is hard. That shape. Um, and then we just start pulling this out kind of softly. And think of this as like a noodle, like a wet noodle. It kind of will drape over like that. Kind of hangs in the middle there. So we're going to draw the top of the wet noodle nose. So it's round here in the middle. Comes down and then connects right over by the eye. And from there, We're gonna go about halfway down between the middle line and the bottom of the circle and just do a little line there. That's where the bottom of the nose is gonna be. So we're gonna arc this over to the side. Have a round parentheses. Same on the other side. 
And now we just connect those with another rounded line. Sipu has a lot of round shapes, similar to all these little circles that we drew. So that's why we warm up with those. Not a lot of corners in Pua. So we can do his little nostrils now. They are pretty high up on the nose. They're just underneath this middle line. And they're, if you imagine a circle, they got squashed, so it got turned into an oval and then got turned, like rolled slightly towards the middle of the face. So the one on the left side, is kind of like that oval. And then the one on the right side rolled the other direction. So it's like that. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's tilted this way. So a lot of what Pua his, his designs kind of build off of the previous thing. So now that we have this nose, we can do a lot with it. So we're going to take the line from the bottom here and we're going to pull that up to the side and right about where we have this open space here between the circle and the horizontal line. I'm just going to pull that up into there like that and do the same thing on the other side. Give me a second to catch up. Okay, so this, this is the mouth corner. We always put these little, little lines here to show that that's his cheek. Okay, so now that we have those anchor points, we can build off of that and make the bottom of the mouth. So his mouth bottom with the jaw is like a view where the lines get pulled out in this direction. So it's kind of like that. And it connects from this side all the way over to the other side. Big smile, he's a happy guy. So a lot of people requested Pua, and it's fun because I never actually had drawn him before, so I got to learn how to do Pua drawings so that I could teach you all how to do it. One day in the future, I probably will show you how I learn how to deconstruct how a character is put together. Because uh, I was asked the other day, are there rules, like like a handbook for how to draw these characters? And uh, now what we're learning is is my interpretation of how to draw these characters. So um, there are things that I've learned from drawing them a couple times and trying to figure out what makes them unique. He's got these great teeth that are so specific to Pua. Um, so what we're first gonna do, we're really lightly gonna come up from the bottom and then just draw a really light rectangle going out all the way over to the other side. He got these fun bottom teeth and they're really pred predominant for him. There's not a lot of Disney characters that have predominant bottom teeth like that. And for those of you that don't know, for our younger audience, predominant means the ones that you're most aware of. So you're most aware of the bottom teeth, so those are the ones that you see and you don't really see his top teeth. Sharpen the pencil again. Okay, so now that we have this basic shape built, I want to do, uh, he has these fun little rounded, they're not really fangs, because they're on the bottom, but it's just these rounded teeth that come up. And we'll go down below that shape and then come right back up to it. And then that happens on the other side. And then you can just darken that line to connect those two. So those are the 
the Pua bottom teeth. So just because that's a little sloppy, I'm going to draw it over here so you can see what the final shape is. So up, back up. So Pua also has a huge tongue in here, so we, we use the shape a lot when we talk about the tongue. It's like an M, but that's rounded out, like that flapping bird shape. Remember all the birds? I've drawn so many birds like that in my life. Uh, and it's going to go all the way over to the side, so it's going to be a big bird. Big bird tongue. See how once you build this nose shape, you kind of build everything off of it? So the last thing we need to do for the muzzle mouth area is just to indicate where the bottom lip is. And that is that's probably about halfway between this line that we made here for the bottom of the lip and then the chin that we have down here. And it just follows this path just a little lower. Let's keep working on the bottom of the face. Um, we talked before about how every line is sort of connected and and uh, related to another one. So since he's smiling so big and the cheeks are pushing out, we can actually push out this shape even farther. So I'm going to give him a little rounded shape. Now, if you remember when we did Judy Hops, she had these really... We wanted to make sure that her cheeks on the side of her face were pointed more up than down. Who is pretty similar, so we want to make sure that his eyes have a lot of, um, sorry, his eyes, I'm drawing eyes. His cheeks have a lot of lift in them because he's a bright little happy guy. And we're going to add some little hairs on there eventually. Do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going a little higher than the middle line. And then here I'm just looking at the other side to try to match the height. Should bring it back in. And I'm going to shave off a little bit of the bottom of the gumdrop, like I did on the other side. Give him a little cheeky hairs. Speaking of hairs, let's give him, he has these little cute little tuft of hairs that come up from the top of his head. So since we shaved it down to this point, this is where his forehead ends. And then it's kind of, if you think of these little quick lines that you can do like this direction that are kind of getting longer in the middle, it gives him some, like a cute little mohawk almost. So these are just scratchy lines that are all pointing up more towards the center. So if you think there's all these lines here, and then they all kind of fall in towards each other in the middle. Like that. I'll show you a cool thing while we're catching up. Um, one of my favorite memories on this film was being able to work with Eric Goldberg. We talked about him a lot before. He animated the genie. Um, and for me, that's one of my favorite, favorite characters ever. And also, he was the animator for Maui's tattoo. We called him Mini Maui in our studio, but I'll show you real quick. This heavy, beautiful maquette. You can see 
Minnie Maui is right here lifting up the rest of the tattoos. But Eric and Mark, Eric uh, Goldberg and Mark Han and Randy Haycock, they all animated um, Minnie Maui on paper, just like this. And then once they were done animating on paper, we had some brilliant technical geniuses who were able to bring that animation into our computer scenes. And then I was uh, able to see in my computer file their animation projected onto Maui's body. And that was amazing. So I got to do a shot with Eric where we coordinated on um, Maui was going to do a little peck bump, a little bounce, and that would knock Mini Maui over. So we talked about what frame that would happen on. And, you know, he's been in the industry for forever. And um, so I kind of thought, well, you know, I want to give him, let him take the lead. You know, he's a genius. And he was so nice, so friendly. And he let me have, a, have an opinion about it, have a thought, and actually have a perspective on what his animation could do and when it would happen. And we were just collaborating and it was awesome. It was a dream, such a cool guy. So that is one of my favorite memories of working on this film. So let's go ahead and draw these big ears that he had told you about earlier. I think I'm probably gonna end up drawing inside of all that stuff, but that's fine. Um, so his ears have a funky shape. We haven't drawn this before. So it's sort of like a guitar pick. If you think of, um, if anyone out there has played guitar before or knows anyone that has, it's like this, but these, these lines on the outside are a little funkier than what we've drawn. So we've done S curve shapes like we did for stitch. It's kind of like that here at the top. And then for the bottom, it arcs down. This is this ear over here, and then it comes back in this way. So we haven't drawn that shape. It's a, it's a weird one. So that's why we're practicing over here. That's what all these doodles on the left side of my paper are for, just practicing that shape. So let's try it. I'm going to start right here at where the hair is and just arc up like that. S-curve shape. And then bring it big arm down and then over to the side. So it's a little big down this way. Music makes it feel like it was perfect. Mulan is a gorgeous soundtrack if you're looking for something to listen to while you're working. Love it. So the inside of the ear is much more simple. It's just an arc that comes in like this. So we're gonna do that right here and then connect it down into this part. Okay, that's that ear. Whew. Okay, now the other ear, it's fun if you wanna, you can do the same exact shape where it comes up to the same height or you can turn it so it's a little lower, just the same shape rotated. Or you can make them the same exact. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go sideways with it, right into all this stuff. What are you gonna do? Let's go this way, and then we have a shorter line here because it's rotated down. And then we do this to here. So once I do my black outlines, then these, these little doodles will fade away. They'll still be there, but it'll be harder to see them. All right, lastly, let's go ahead and finish the eyes. So we have the outside of the eyes here, and he has these cute little eyelashes, so you can go a little thicker on the top part of the eye. It's been a while since we did that. We had that trick that we learned back in the first class with Mickey that to get some eyelashes, you can just do the top part of the eye a little darker. Haven't needed to do it in a while, but now that we're doing Pua, he has the same kind of design.
This music is from one of my favorite scenes in Tangled. The lanterns. I don't know if anyone's ever been to the uh, World of Disney store or the Disney store on um, in Times Square. But they have these lanterns that take you up to the second floor. And it'll take you up. You just go up an escalator. And then you are underneath the lanterns. And it feels magical. We were supposed to go to New York soon. But I think we had to cancel that trip just for safety. But we'll go again. So for the actual iris, which is the color part of the eye, we're going to put a circle towards the middle here. And a tip to keep him from looking cross-eyed, we've mentioned it before, but these are the two eyeballs. I'm drawing the circle a little bit pulled over to the left so that I get this little negative shape here. This, and this helps pull the eye out this direction. If I were to do it again, you can still see this freak. But then I had the eyes all the way over and they would feel like they were crossed. But this feels much less like it's crossed. So that's why I have the shape here that's an important shape to keep. So Pooh has some pretty detailed eyes for a pig. So we're gonna give him a pupil, which is another smaller circle in the center of that one. And then an even smaller circle. I'm going to put mine right here, right in the middle of both of those. This way, this circle, the smallest one, is one that we're not going to color in. Because that's going to be a little highlight, a little shine. Okay, so that is Pua underdrawing. Cleaning up a little bit. He has some colored patches on his head, but those are kind of in gray. So rather than doing them with a red pencil, I'm just going to do them all with this pencil. So we're not quite done with him yet. Sharpen it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've mentioned it before, but I am right-handed. So I start on the left side of the drawing while I'm coloring it in and uh, doing my outlines because I don't want to smudge it as I move my hand across. So if you are lefty, then you can start on the right side of your page and then work towards the left. But I go this way. I love seeing everyone's drawings come in. So I'm looking forward to seeing what all you do with Pua have this hashtag I keep at the top of the page so you can see it, but it's Drawing with Woodsy. It's the easiest way for me to find your work and then share it. I'm sure Adam would love to see all of the, the puas that people draw. So these lines over here that are the cheek lines, I just kind of keep them a little scratchy, so that way it feels like fur. If I were to draw it really smooth, then it wouldn't feel quite like fur, but if I kind of do these little scratchy lines that are off of that, then it feels a little more furry. So that's why I do that. And at this point, we've cut into the gumdrop shape, but you really won't even see it because once we start all this, then this just sort of fades away as another sketchy animator line. Some of my favorite drawings are the most sketchy looking drawings. Frank Thomas, who was an animator for most of Disney's history, uh, he was one of the nine old men. He was famous for doing really scratchy drawings, um, not as a style, he was just trying to search for what uh, he wanted the drawing to be. So his drawings are, they show a lot of work, a lot of um, attempts. So that gives me encouragement because he, he animated some incredible stuff. He was the lead animator on Hook for, for uh, Peter Pan. He also animated a lot of Baloo. So many things. 
Pinocchio. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Okay, so I'm gonna put a sheet of paper down in between my hand and this part because I don't wanna smudge it. Grab a scrap sheet of paper I have over here. Let's see. What's this scrap? Okay, this is uh, test the moon sheet that I do. So, put that over here. So again, these are the scratchy lines, just like the cheek lines. So you don't need those to be perfect. It's fun too when you do them quickly. So you don't need to slowly draw that line. It's like these center lines that we go quickly for so that we don't get bumpy lines. Same with the scratchy hairs. It might take a little bit of practice, but that's what the side of the paper is for. You can practice. And it helps if you go the same direction. So if I start from the bottom, I move up to the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start coloring in these eyebrows. They're gonna be pretty dark. I like saving the eyes for the end, so I'm just going to go straight over to the mouth corner. Some of the unsung heroes of animation. Back in the 2D animation days, I think the cleanup artists really didn't get a lot of credit for their work. Kind of what we're doing now is the work of a cleanup artist, where we have our animation drawing underneath and then we're going through and cleaning up the line. It takes a lot of work to try to maintain the appeal of an animation drawing in a clean line. But a lot of the best artists have that ability. And in computer animation, that department is known as um, technical animation. So they don't do lines like this, um, but they will receive the character animation and then do a lot of cleanup work to make sure that it feels consistent or help um, context because the computer software isn't that smart to figure out how things should contact. So they do a lot of sculpting by hand on these computer models. So. It's, it's a hard job to describe to people, and I think because of that, they don't really get a ton of credit for what they do, but they are some amazing artists. So easiest to point at the hair that they work on. So Moana, for instance, has some of the best computer animated hair I've ever seen, and all of that work is from the technical animation team. Animators didn't have control over the hair, really, that would be in the final film. So that beautiful hair, the look was designed by one group of people and the movement was designed by technical animators. So a lot of people working together to make one thing. Over here, we're gonna go ahead and do the bottom lip. So for the bottom lip, I wanna show you a technique I like to use to show uh, how things are shaped. So I'm going to taper the line. And by tapering, I mean it's going to be more thin out on the outside, and then in the middle of the line, it's going to be a little thicker. So it kind of would feel like a shadow. So if I were to do that line by itself over here, it would be thin and then thick. Well, okay, I'm going to break that pencil. Push it down really hard and then thin again. So this is a, an example, extreme example of tapering. So that's kind of what this is meant to be here. And a little bit more, try not to break my pencil. I'm just so strong. 
for anyone that knows me, they know that's a hilarious joke. Let's do the teeth. I would make Pooh's voice here probably, but he doesn't really speak. Probably grunts, that kind of thing, but doesn't have words. Okay, let's do these nostrils. I see now that this nostril is a little smaller than that one. I'm gonna try to make them similar, so let's do this one first. Slanted circle, slanted oval, and then make this one a little bigger down there at the bottom. And that's fine because we're gonna just gonna shade that in a little bit like this, and no one will ever know that we made a mistake. See, now I made it too big. I mean, everyone will know that I made a mistake because this is on the internet. But yours, we're just gonna see the final. Well, now I'm in the mood to color things in. I'm procrastinating before I do these eyes. The eyes scare me because they're always the first place that people look, so I'm putting that off. So I'm just gonna start coloring this in kind of in a fan pattern, starting from the corner, moving out towards the middle. Let's do the other side. I don't know why I'm doing it this way, but here we are. That's not a good teacher. Let's figure this out. Okay, so I'm going fanning outward because I want to try to, rather than having everything go in a diagonal, try to make it feel like it doesn't have a direction. I think that's why I'm doing this. So when I see it, it should just have an even um, smattering of graphite for this pencil. Move it out a little bit. I'm gonna sharpen it again because of my brute strength. Okay, no more time to procrastinate. It's time to do the eyes. Sometimes when you have a sharp pencil and then you start pressing, it'll break. So it's, it's good, I've seen a lot of animators do this, to just pre-break their pencil. Just go out to the side and push down until you get a little bit of a chip and then kind of file that down so that it feels more consistent. All right, we're doing this eye first. So I'm gonna start on the outside where it's thicker and I can make more mistakes. Just coloring in the shape. Ooh, I can see how dirty my hands are. We're gonna clean up extra good. drawing and you hate it don't throw it away you're almost done look at us we're so close don't throw it away I think some of my favorite couple favorites my favorite things that I see are videos of families drawing together either over Skype or um, in a room together I just love that this has become like a community activity and then my other favorite thing is when people tell me that they were going to give up but then they decided not to and then they were so happy they didn't. You guys don't know, people say that all the time. It's a real thing. Okay, so we left this smallest circle open because that's the highlight, so we're not gonna color that in. That's one eye. And then the other eye. eyes are so small. These are probably the smallest eyes we've drawn, aren't they? Probably a little bigger than Winnie the Pooh's eyes, but his were just dots. But I think that smallness of the eye makes me nervous. I don't know if you guys are nervous also while you do this. Ooh. that in a little bit. 
and leave that little circle uncolored. I'm gonna take a second to just breathe while we did that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so like I said, he has a couple patches. The first patch we kind of indicated here with this line, so I'm just gonna start coloring that in lightly with gray, like even lighter than we colored the inside of the mouth. I'm gonna show you a fun little trick to make that feel like fur. Okay, so seeing it as it is now, it doesn't really feel like fur yet, right? But if we start doing these little scratchy lines on the outside, now that feels like fur. Just a quick little thing like that will go a long way. Okay, now those patches that I told you about, he has some extra little coloring patches that happen on the top of his head and his ears. So we're going to start those. One is over here. So I'm just going to roughly just do this sort of thing. And it's all one direction. I'm using the side of my pencil like that. And you can practice on the side of your page like this, these scratchy lines that are kind of quick. And you can also do shorter shorter ones where you're pressing a little harder, and then that feels like different color fur. And the reason we're going this direction is because that's the way that the fur is going to the end of the ear. So that's the medium sized patch. Then he has a small patch here on his head. Really small. Side of the pencil. And the biggest patch he has is over here on this ear. So I'm gonna turn my sheet so that I can get a better angle. And that is over here. So it's all on the ear, which is behind the cranium. So we're not gonna have any of the patch come forward in front of that line. So I'm just gonna start there. Kind of bring it up there. And again, we can go darker lines in there to make it feel like different little hairs. trick so if you want to try it on the side of your page you just do like that and then you can do darker lines in there so what I'm doing for that is I'm just pressing harder and then I move fast and then I push up and let it go so it's a lot of you can do a lot of practice on the side of your page if you need to practice for that one little shading technique so speaking of shading there's not too much color on him uh, luckily I did mine in red not luckily, I did it on purpose because I planned things. And I'm going to color in the nose pink. So it's just a light red. Just gonna keep it in the same direction. I think one of my favorite things about Pua is that Milan had to leave him when she went on her journey. But as soon as she got back, I'm coloring in this bottom, bottom part a little darker so that it feels like it's in shadow. As soon as she got back, Pua was the first one to say hi to her, right? He was like, it was like he was waiting the whole time. He's a good friend. And then also the tongue, I'm just going to color that in a little bit as well. I'm going to try one little small thing that we've gotten it pretty much done. I want to make the mouth a little darker. Remember how we say we find the drawing as we go. So I'm going to just make a little half, a little like parentheses here and then the other parentheses there and just color that in darker. And that is like his throat. So we sort of did this for Stitch, if you remember. We have done Stitch. That's a fun drawing. You should go back and watch that. So 
but this gives him a little little throat back there. And I'm also gonna color the nostrils a little darker. Okay, and that is cool. The last thing we always do, and this time I'm remembering, we sign our drawings. So I'm going to sign my drawing down here in the bottom. Use my whole name. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and transfer you back. There we go. Awesome. So. That is Pua. He's a fun guy to draw. Thank you for your suggestion. I was excited to learn how to draw him uh, based on your suggestion. So um, keep your suggestions coming in. We get I get a lot of fun ideas from you guys, so I appreciate that. Um, now that we're done drawing, we want to make sure we clean off our hands again. We're going to do that here. Please post your drawings online using the hashtag drawing with Woodsy, so that way I can find it, I can share it. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see on my stories, I just post everyone's drawings as they come in. So uh, if you don't, you should, because these drawings are a lot of fun to see one after the other. Um, it's, I like posting them up, and then at the end of the, end of the night, I go back and rewatch them just to see how, how they all look together. So anyway, thank you again for joining me. Um, my favorite thing about this whole thing is that just because we're separated doesn't mean we need to be alone. And you guys have joined me for two and a half weeks so far. So it's been a blast and uh, let's keep this up. We're gonna have a fun time tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Bye now.